Is he ever on time for these? Seriously? I'm here. Oh, I'm here. look who walks in. I'm here, Frank. Come sorry. What's happening? I'm sorry. sorry. I was not in the bathroom. I was hoping to be in the bathroom, but <laughs> no, I was outside trying to do one of these stupid new parking meters. Uh -huh. things that yes. Here, where you have to know your license plate. <laughs> yeah. Who the hell knows their license plate? I don't, and I'm, I'm borrowing my mom's car while I'm in town, which sounds, that's really, you're not going to cruise chicks. No, I got my mom's Chevy. <laughs> Honestly, come with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's got a box of tissue in the back. See, why wouldn't it? She's over 70. Oh, no, she's not 70 yet. But anyway, sorry, Mom. Um, yeah, you have to enter your license plate. Mine's covered with snow. I'm at the pay station freezing. I got to come back. But anyway, I got my money in. The city of Pittsburgh, you got the money. So there you go. This is another Yakin' with your Jag Off segment. And the folks from the Arcade Comedy Theater were nice enough to, nice enough to let us in. Actually, not really. We broke the window. We climbed in. Because <laughs> it was so doggone cold outside. But <laughs> Five arcade, degrees. ArcadeComedyTheater.com is where you need to go for all this great comedy. It's improv, right. all that kind of stuff, but they let us sit and talk to Frank, and Frank, you're a Pittsburgh guy, yeah. and let's talk about, like, done good. Pittsburgh guy, done good. You're yeah. in L.A., you're a big wing. Things are going all right. Yeah, yeah. I'm some way, I guess, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I was born and raised here. Uh, my dad's from Woods Run, from the north side, and I grew up uh, there in North Hills mostly. I went to North Allegheny. Um, but yeah, started comedy back at the Funny Bone on, on Route 51. Yeah. Banksville Road, and I closed that club, and the headliner was Mark Roberts, who uh, is now the creator of Mike and Molly, okay. the TV show. In the middle was Drew Carey, oh my and I God. was the MC. And then the weird thing is, is like 12 years ago, I'm looking at houses, and uh, Mark Roberts, I bought a house from Mark Roberts. This wow. is when he was still, I think he was just, he was writing on uh, Two and a Half Men. But it was just like, I saw him and I'm like, Mark, Frank Nicotero. And he's like, yeah, yeah, he's, what, can you do? what are you doing here? I'm like, I have an appointment to see this house, because this is my house, because he was walking outside the house. He's like, all right, I'm selling this house to you. And I go, oh, that'd be awesome. And his realtor, who was the next door neighbor, was mad. She's like, we have an open house tomorrow. You're gonna get way above uh, asking price. He's like, nope, I wanna sell it to somebody I know. She was mad, because he's just wow. asking price, got it, next day. I had, it's the scariest day of your life, too, because now you're like, oh my God, I have a mortgage. It was very scary, but yeah, so anyway, that was my whole full so you do, you, you're Full a stand-up comedian, you've done yeah. a bunch of, and your, your comedy, you've done acting, you've done, you've done game show hosts. A little bit of everything, yeah, yeah. Let's, I mean, let's go uh, through that. Yeah, I mean, I started as a comic here and then uh, moved to LA. I went on game shows. I went on a game show that Wink Martindale hosted, who I grew up watching on Tic Tac Doe and, you know, so here I am now on a show with Wink Martindale, it's called Debt, D-E-B-T. You had to prove that you were in debt to get out of debt. And there were, a lot of comics went on, Bobby Tessel, Chip Chinnery, a lot of comics went on. And I had like $7,000 that I could prove in credit card debt, maybe a car loan, I couldn't remember. And I ended up doubling it at the end, I won $14,000. So I won that money, and uh, most of it right up the nose. You know, it was in LA, no, I'm joking. Um, I lived off of in LA for like, you know, like a couple years, and, and, and I got to meet uh, some game show producers that would bring me in for run-throughs of new game shows, and they'd pay like 25 bucks. I want to make sure we talk about, you have a new show coming up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, win, uh, loser. Win, loser, pawn. It's on CMT, Country Music Television. It's our first game show. Uh, it's, it's basically like cash cab kind of meets a pawn shop. Uh, people come in, they know they're on a pawn shop. They, you know, they come in, and there's me and this guy, John Kreiderman, who's a pawn expert, and appraises the item, and they haggle and say they get 100 bucks, 150 bucks. I put the money down. So it's 150 bucks, I go, okay, you can leave. And they start to leave and I go, oh, wouldn't you rather have 300? And they're like, well, how can I do that? And I say, well, you're not just on a pawn show, you're on a pawn game show. And then sirens go off and freak them out and they usually swear. And, uh, and then one of the monitors that's like for sale, like one of the TVs at the pawn shop, questions come up. Uh, in 60 seconds, they can answer up to 10 questions and add more money. Then after they win that money, it's like, okay, so you're up to 240 bucks, there you go, you can leave, or, you can answer one more question, and if you get it right, you'll double your money to 480, and we'll give you your item back. So it comes down to that double or nothing, or sometimes it's even triple or nothing, and uh, it's a really cute show. And the questions are are kind of like what I used to ask on Street Smarts, like who's the vice president? Uh, one of the questions are, what color are the cups in uh, Toby Keith's song Red Solo Cups? Someone said <laughs> blue. Maybe they're just not a country music fan, or maybe they just didn't. But um, it's fun. It's, it's, it moves fast. There's uh, four contestants per show. So if you like pawn shows, you see pawn items that are rare. We have a guy that made lamps out of bones, which is really weird. C cow bones, not human bones. And, uh, and then you got the game show on it too. So it's, it's really fun, but it's on CMT now, so take a look.
And you've been on my favorite show of all. You know, there were there was a big gap in, in TV entertainment. There were the Three Stooges, and then there was Wipeout. The oh, show yeah. Wipeout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I really could sit there and pee my pants, it's, literally, watching well, Wipeout. Uh, I used to host a show on uh, on Yahoo called Primetime in No Time, okay. and it was a little re it was a recap of TV from the night before. It was like a little three minute show. It's still going with a different host, but uh, I did like four years of it, and we used to always use Wipeout, and we would just laugh at how dumb these people look. So they called up and said, "Okay, Big Mouth, why don't you come out and run the corpse?" And I thought, "Oh, okay, this will be easy. It's fun. It'll be ah, it'll, oh, I'll fall down and it'll be great." Um, yeah, it wasn't fun. Uh, First of all, I don't own a wetsuit. They said, bring a wetsuit. I'm like, I don't know, I'm not a surfer. I'm from Pittsburgh, I don't know, sir. So I show up in sweatpants and tennis shoes, and the safety guy at the beginning is like, are you wearing sweatpants and tennis shoes? I'm like, yeah, and he goes, good luck. I didn't know why he looked at me that way. And soon as I hit the first obstacle and went to the water, which is chilled to 40 degrees purposely at eight in the morning on a Saturday, I went, oh my God, what have I done? And I knew I was in trouble. So the sweatpants from Target are now an extra 20 pounds soaking wet. The tennis shoes are filled with mud. They're an extra 10 pounds. And uh, it's one of the most painful things. And then at the end, I'm supposed to land on that platform after the zip line. And I hit it split legged and my crotch and I fall. Your sweatpants are down over your They're down your over shoes. my shoes. They're falling down. <laughs> I'm trying to pull them up. Terrible front, Oh man. my god, and they're pulling up, then they're, they're putting in like sound effects like rrr, rrr, as I try to pull them up, and then when I'm walking at one point, they're playing like the tuba fat guy music, like, it was a humiliating experience. So, your home, one of the things you you can't believe haven't changed here in Pittsburgh that would totally tick you off? You know, everything everything's the same except for downtown, there's now parking system. That's the only thing I don't like. <laughs> Couldn't they just have meters? Weren't meters simple? You put a coin in, you turned it. This whole license plate thing, but you know, I, my family and friends are still here. They're still the same, and, and I like, I love that. I love about coming home, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's the consistency I want, you know. Yeah. And I see, you know, old friends from high school still. I mean, they're still my best friends in the world. And you're very cheeky because you brought a pet, very <laughs> sea ish This is, I feel, green. I'm not like, you know, like Mickey Rourke travels around the dog. Yeah, here, let me show you guys. This is, uh, this is my dog. I brought my dog. This is man eater. This is yeah. No, he's very friendly. Oh, and he likes to kiss. There you this go. This is Dodger. Uh, this is the first time he's ever been in cold weather, so he's kind of freaking out. Yeah, here he is. Well, the toughest part was getting the dog through makeup today, because yeah, he was. He was. He's. I know. I, and all my Pittsburgh friends are watching this. Oh my God, Frank bought a dog with him. He's gone so LA. No, it was just a. I wanted to bring him to Pittsburgh for the hey, first time. What are you? Come on. <laughs> oh shit. Is that is that your car? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man, no, don't take it me. I can't believe he brought a dog. What a Hollywood. Oh come on. Well, at least I was on time. First he shows up late, then he gets a ticket. Ah, you jag off. 